What have you guys been up to, though? We've been gone for like like a month, a and, month. and a half. Yeah. Mm. It's been a chunk. It has been a chunk. My October was filled with hospital. Not like filled, mm. filled with hospital. Like, I think that's more cam scene was filled, filled. But like for us, we spent two weeks with Millie in the hospital. I must Because brutal. she had a respiratory virus. She had an adenovirus, which is just like a common cold. And she was in the hospital for two weeks with it. And um, Kate was sick too. I was sick for a good part of that. I'm back to being kind of sick now, but I'm almost over it. So I'm here. I'm alive. We're good. But we lost a lot of time. Um, and that's that's the majority of my October was just being sick in general. Um, I don't know how you guys made it through our break, our unintentional break. It just like it was unplanned. But I know I'm just, I was the only one with stuff going on. I've been playing other games, catching up on some shows that I hadn't been watching because I still I can't do a lot of stuff. Although my arm has come a long ways with the occupational therapy. You know, when I started, I could probably barely even get it to here. And now I'm all the way to here. I can almost like touch my own shoulder. No. Straightening out wow. is a little bit better. It's not perfect, mm. but. Yeah, and uh, getting more stuff going at work. While we while we were away, didn't you have to like get that reset or something? Like, didn't they have to go back in there and put screws in or something? How long has it been? It's been a long time. Like the last time. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I had surgery. I got cut open. I got a nice, fancy little scar on my arm now. I got a plate and twelve screws, and I'm learning to bend my elbow with a piece of metal in it. Oh, yeah. Feel feel funky. I did it first, but I'm starting to get used to it. And it just feels normal now. Does it, like hit your funny bone at all, and like really jack you up every once in a while. No. Oh, okay. It's Only if a better place. I forget that. about it. Like when I wake up in the morning, I really like to just. Uh, but then I get to a certain point, which is getting better, but it starts to hurt, and I'm like, "Ooh, ah, I can't do that." Okay. <laughs> wow. Playing through Metroid Prime 1, still only 25% through. I haven't played in like the past week, but. Oh, you're still a quarter way into the game? Yeah, into Metroid 1. Nice. We've been, um, we've been, speaking of shows, we, um, we've been watching Andor, which is pretty, which pretty good. That um, was good. We're, I think we're like one episode away from finishing it. Okay. Like we're getting close. We're not done with it just yet, but. So far, it's been really good. Um, we finished Rings of Power, the first season of Rings of Power. Mm. That was a good show, too. Really like that. Brutal, brutal ending. I don't know how far we are with House of the Dragon, but we're getting, I don't know. I would estimate maybe halfway through it. I don't. You know. finished Edge Runners? And I finished Edge Runners. I watched that one on my own because overall, it's maybe like, what, three to four hours long for the whole season. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's and I don't know how Kate is with graphic stuff, but there was plenty of graphic stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, that's part of why I watched alone because I was just like, people's heads are gonna get blown up. There's gonna be like, <laughs> oh yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff going on. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, probably not gonna, <laughs> probably not gonna make that one a family event. So, <laughs> you know, we didn't. Um, but I did see that. That was that was interesting. I wasn't a huge fan of the end of that one, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It was one of those yeah, things I, yeah. where, like, the main character makes a decision, like, four episodes before the end and then just sticks with it no matter how many of his closest friends try to talk to him and, like, relate to him. He's like, forget you. I'm doing what I want. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. Nobody really won yeah, that in was, the end of that show. Yeah. It was frustrating. Like, some of the conversations even where they just wouldn't talk to each other, but they pretended like they were talking to each other. I'm like, you're not. You guys are pretending to be friends. Or pretend they were talking like, at each other, not right. to each other. Yeah, so it was just, it was just frustrating to watch. <laughs> so as much as it was like it was a fun watch, it was action packed. It was such a like visually amazing series. And at the end, I didn't regret watching it, but I was like, man, they made the characters the most frustrating characters they could right before they had them like 
put on this performance, basically. <laughs> so. Uh, I guess the last thing I'll say before we get Anthony a chance in here, because he's been just listening to us the whole time, is I got my muscle, my handlebar mustache back. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Fancy. Just, just in time for uh, No Shave November. <laughs> mm. Good thing it's not No Trim November, though. Spread, spread that <laughs> awareness. <laughs> that would be brutal. You just have full on neck beards. Oh yeah. I mean I I do, but I shaved like this. Yeah, no, I don't do I don't really do I just have a beard all year round, so I don't really bother with the let me grow out my mustache, because nobody would be able to tell the difference. <laughs> In the summertime I like shaving most of the beard. It's cooler. Yeah. T- temperature cooler. I got you. What you been up to, Maya? You know, just living. There's not really much that I went How's to. Uh, emotionals going. Went to an indoor bounce house. That was fun. C emotionals is going great, actually. Um, we actually have a plan for that soon, which is going to be really fun. I can't talk about it right now, but confidential. Yeah, I got me some Lapsang Sushong tea. Ooh, oh, nice. Tasting the wood burn and fire. That's on mm. theme. You can actually say it's a Lapsang Sushang fog because there's milk in it. Yeah, it does look milky. I don't know if that works the same as London fog. I don't, I don't think it does, but we're going with it. I got one of their coats. La- our our uh, podcast <laughs> has traditionally been a fan of the Lapsang Sushang. Mm-hmm. Good old... um. I got a big bag behind me. What's I, his name? I appreciate that. Lop. Lopsa. Is it just Lopsa? Yeah. What? Well, guys, any playing good games lately? I mean, I when I was in the hospital, I replayed A Link to the Past and just destroyed it. Um, a few hours gone. Boom. Yeah. And then I um I went back and I got that. Remember when I uh I got my Switch from Mikey for, on the cheap? And he accidentally left his um, Super Mario 3D All-Stars in it. And so... He didn't care about it. Well, he didn't. He you know, he said, oh, yeah, just get it back to me whenever. And then a few months later, he was like, hey, just keep it. I got a new copy. I was like, all right, sure. Um, so I went back and I played Super Mario 64 on that and got all 120 stars in that game, too. So Dang. Well, it took a lot longer than A Link to the Past, I will say that. That game, like, that's pretty much what I did while I was in the hospital. And, like, we had downtime. I would just be, like, jumping on Goombas. So, <laughs> fun stuff. Uh, see, I played, I'm in a little bit of a Pokemon <laughs> Platinum run. I also did a little bit of Nuzlocking on Fire Red played a roguelike called Hades where you play as the son of Hades and try to fight your way out of Hades is so good. <laughs> it is. I've beaten it like probably beaten the final boss like six or seven times now. Okay. And I've yeah. been having a lot of fun. The dual boons can be so good. The last setup I did was with the the ice lady turns your your cast into a beam and then I upgraded that beam like five times. I was creating a giant shock wave when I used it. It was dealing more damage. They were staying down for three seconds longer. It, it was just melting everything. It was great. That is great. I always like the Athena, like just getting the shields. Like it's like a staple. Every time I play the game, that's part of my build is like dash shield. Because then oh, I yeah. dash through projectiles and send them all back. It's just it's so broken. <laughs> if I watched a couple videos when I first started playing, because there's a lot of stuff in that game, and yeah. every single tip video said, if you get Athena and you get the chance to throw Reflect on your dash, do it every time. Yeah. And I'm like, it's, okay. It's so good. It's so And I don't, I don't disagree with it. <laughs> there's like achievements in the game for using all the different dash techniques, and at some point I'll have to beat the game with those. <laughs> But until then, I'm like, I'm just going to dash my way to victory. It's it's too good. Nah, sometimes you just don't get Athena, you know? Sometimes you don't. Um, in terms of streaming, I've actually been taking a break on Breath of the Wild streaming. Because I'm ahead at this point because we're behind, technically. Yeah. Not that I really care anymore <laughs> at this point. We're so <laughs> off. I'm like, we're just going to run with what we got. Um, but I have been streaming Majora's Mask. 
It was originally yeah. supposed to be an October series until we were in the hospital. Um, so now it's going on into November. So that's what we're up to there. It's been fun. By the time this airs, I might even be done with the game. So, you know, <laughs> it's what it is, but figure it out. Uh, I know that I talked to you about this, Fonz, but did you see the game I posted in uh, chat cam? Yeah, and I watched a video of it. Yeah, so I just found that, stumbled upon it. It's called Windbound, and it's a survival game that is mixed with like Wind Waker and Raft. Not as much customization as Wind Waker, not as much adventure as... Or, sorry, not customization. Customization is raft and not as adventurous as Wind Waker. But it's three ninety nine on the Switch. And the survival aspect is actually really challenging. And the combat is very challenging. From what I've tasted of it so far, um, the food is scarce and you can die just by not having food. And the combat is super challenging. So... The game's really cool. And I was very surprised. I just randomly was like, well, it's $3. If it sucks, oh well. And it's been fun. I got about two hours, three hours into it already. And I feel like it's going to be a long game. That's like most of the reviews are like, it's too long. So I gave up and gave it like a one star. But. (laughs) Okay. Five out of 10 game too long. (laughs) Basically. That's what most of the reviews came from, from what I saw, was the game is too challenging and too long towards endgame, and then people just give up. It happens. Yeah, some games do be had. So, I mean, I guess that's like our our catch-up session. Do you guys want to actually get into this episode? Yes. Let's do it. Welcome to A for No, B for Yes, the Zelda theme podcast where we go chapter by chapter through the game. Last time we, you saw us, which was ages ago, we went through Lurellan Village and all of the oceans surrounding Hyrule. This time we're taking our way over to the Rito Village. I'm Ryan Fonzi, your co-host, and with me as always. You got <laughs> Anthony here, and I am just that food spot and when you cooked it after the microwave and it's just cold it's just cold in that spot and you can never get it out oh no <laughs> it's who invited you frozen <laughs> who invited you and i am the mustachioed wonder cameron hagee fantastic e- e- oh my goodness guys it has been a long time yeah of course before our intro, we uh, we kind of covered what we've been up to and what we've been doing, but um, but guys, I, I miss I miss being here in the studio. Can I just say that? You probably miss being anywhere but the hospital. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that does happen. We were there two straight weeks. This does feel like forever. So, uh, from where we left off, which was Lou Relin, I think it's more of like a western journey. Um, to get over to the, the Tabantha region. Um, they are in the Tabantha region, right? See, this is going to be the problem. I played North of Tabantha. North, of, north Tabantha. of Tabantha. Mm-hmm. I, played, I played this section of the game um, probably the full month and a half ago. So I did watch my own playthrough as a review. But as for geography, I'm going to be really sketchy. Um, um, wait. It's the west big rock. Of <clears throat> west of Tabantha. They're in they're in like the Hebra area. It's south of Hebra, I think, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, south of Hebra. So from the second you start the game, you can see this big bird flying around in the sky if you look off into the distance in the right direction. Um, and this is the second 
of the divine beast that we plan to take on. Um, partly because it, it is visible immediately. So it's, it's automatically like a good target. You can find your way there pretty easily. Um, but also, uh, the skill that we end up getting from this divine beast is one of the most useful, um, in terms of just utility for the rest of the game. Um, so that's why we chose to do things in this order, just to make the rest of the game a little bit easier for us to make our way through, keep up with what have you. Um, but yeah, so we head on over and right before we get to the actual Rito village, um, there's, I don't know if you guys made your way over to the stable that's right outside. It's the Rito stable. Just the Rito? <laughs> oh, like right before the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Right I thought there. it was before. Yeah. Okay. Um, at the Rito stable, you can meet a few cool people. I mean, you can meet Lester who just wants spicy food. He, like he wants a spicy dish. I think he'll give you like a specific recipe that he's looking for. Um, but you can also run into Cass there, which is interesting because Cass isn't in the Rito village, even though he is a Rito, like he's out of the stable. And he specifically mentions that he has family um, at the village, but that he can't go see them right now. Like he's, he's busy on this mission. Um <laughs> Which is what we've been seeing. Like every time you run into him, like you're seeing part of his mission, which is um, actually going around and studying this song and like visiting the areas and basically helping you to find these shrines. Um, you know, he has like, all these ancient legends that he's trying to share with you. Um, his story is not going to resolve for us until later on in the game. We actually have an episode plan to kind of go over that. Um, but just, it's worth noting that he's here. And when we get in there, one of the first groups we're going to meet is his family. Um, so yeah, we can make our way into the Rito village, which is basically, uh, there's like a giant perch. It kind of looks like a cane, but it's like, it's a bird perch, um, <clears throat> that is jutting out of a giant crater-esque just hole it's like there's water at the bottom um there's like a, a little set of islands that lead into the Rito village uh but it's all i don't know it's just like a a big lake that's just surrounded by cliff so i don't even know what you would call that kind of landmass, but it, it's almost like a quarry or something like that <clears throat> it's just straight up water in the bottom of this hole sinkhole quarry i don't know yeah um, so yeah, this is the Rito village. I mean, the first thing that stands out to me about this place is the music. <clears throat> Beautiful. Fam familiar with Wind Waker. They straight up like brought the, the Rito village, like the actual dragon roost Island music right over here and like adapted it for, for this village, which is just a super hit of nostalgia right off the bat. What are you guys' first impressions of the of the Rito Village? My first thought is the layout of it and how it's just a circle and then stairs up and then a circle and then stairs up and then a circle. Yeah. Which, I mean, there's no other real way to do it around, like, just a giant cylindrical rock structure. Right. But that's always the first thing that hits me is, like, is this the level I need to be on to find the guy I'm looking for? Or is it above me? <laughs> Yeah, it do, it does get confusing because basically their whole town is a spiral staircase, <laughs> and there's a bunch of um, characters who look very similar to one another. I will just say, yeah, um, just because they're all I mean they're all birds, but they um like the, even the coloring, uh, like if if it wasn't for location, I don't know if I would be able to tell the difference between like Bedily and Sicily. <laughs> like there's two different. Like, I don't know if they're supposed to be related when that kind of so, thing happens. Can we talk about their names, too? Because I sure. feel like a good chunk of them are just straight up Italian names. Like we have <laughs> well, Amali and Bedoli and Sicily and Gisane <laughs> and we got Canili. Kind of sounds like Canoli. And then we have Canoli, like Mosley. Yeah. Not all of them, but most of them are like straight up Italian. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the thinking behind that was, but you're not wrong. 
A lot they living of, up in a, the sky. A lot, of the, <laughs> a lot of the names end in the I. Apparently, if if I was in the game, this is where I would be. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Never thought about that. You'd be able to fly, my guy. Ravali. Even the main guy we're here to see. Well, not here to see, but you know what I mean. Oh, my goodness. This is going to color my entire perspective of this now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So They're just Italian up. birds up there. Yeah, as we walk up, we meet this first paisan. His name is Hearth. He's just chilling with Hearth. a broken arm. Oh, man. Um, no. I know the pain. Well... Yeah, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a couple of those <laughs> characters. This episode wings get wings get damaged, um. But I mean, there's a, you know there's a lot of characters in this town. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but you can assume like every other village, there's you know a shop and a and a like a an inn an inn right. Um, you know there's a clothing store stuff like that. Um, those characters, I, I mean, I've talked to everybody in the village. I'll, most of them don't have anything really story relevant or lore wise to share with you. Um, they're just Hearth, like, Hey, the elder, you should go see him. Yeah. Hearth is the first one that stands out because he doesn't like, he's a bow craftsman. He's not really a bow shop. Like it's just a, he's a bow craftsman, but he's sitting there kind of, you know, nursing his arm when you first meet him. Um, and he basically tells you like, yeah, business isn't really going anywhere right now. Like I'm dealing with this pain. Um, and you can just pretty much tell him to take care and keep it moving. But, uh, what we do learn is that hearth was injured by the divine beast. Um, so it's not just like floating there menacingly. Like it, it turns out if, if the read will fly too high, the, the, this divine beast is actually shooting them out of the sky. Like they can't, they can't fly high right now. Like they have to keep it low, which I guess for for the Rito people is super demoralizing. Um, I if I was in the town, if I was actually a Rito, I would probably suggest they all move to some other rock, <laughs> just leave the divine beast <laughs> there. But, There's lots I of mean, land. They could just fly low over somewhere that's kind of nearby and then fly there, right? I mean, I know it's probably their like ancestral homeland. They want to fly through those skies, but if as long as they don't sure, fly too yeah. high, the the beast pretty much is just sitting there. Unlike the last guys we helped, where you know most of Hyrule would have flooded and a lot of people would have died if we didn't help. This one's just flying around. Yeah, for sure. It's like it's like a no fly zone, basically, <laughs> just right over top of the Rito. It's like the worst place to have a no fly zone. This airspace is controlled. Yeah, mm-hmm. we get. Continue our way up. I mean, you can meet Laisa, who is kind of important in a minute, but she won't really talk to you now. She won't talk to you until you've talked to the elder. So <clears throat> we go to the elder, who uh, is very much designed after Kapor Gabora, but is not named as such. This is um, the big cannoli himself. <clears throat> oh, man. Cannelli. Uh and I love the design of Canelli. Like, I love the big, like, owl elder. Mm-hmm. It's just fun. I mean, most of these, most of the Rito are, I don't, I don't know what you would say, like, falcon or parrot-esque. Like, you kind of get, I don't know. They they all kind of seem to be very similar species of bird. Yeah, like a falcon or an eagle or something. And then you have the one that plays the um, accordion. Yeah, he looks more like a parrot yeah, to me. Cass, Cass is like a straight up macaw, um, and then Canelli here is an owl. So kind of similar, it's like different to, subspecies. Yeah, it's kind of similar to uh, the Zora, where you have like you know the big shark ones, like just randomly. Yeah, um, or like you know the stingray guy, but the rest are just regular Zora with fish fish heads yeah um, it's kind of like that like you have like your base rito and then you have your interesting like standout unique rito um but it's cool um so Canelli tells you everything like he tells you yeah big bird in the sky shooting everybody down it's bad um tiba who we haven't met yet and hearth are two of the more uh uh, strong-willed. I, I, I remember, forget the term he actually uses. Um, 
Yeah. Able bodied, maybe. No, it has to do with like their their um stubbornness kind of. It's like I don't I don't remember what term these used. two obstinate boys. <laughs> Not hot headed or something like that. Basically, like these two, um, you know, like I said, strong willed, uh, Rito warriors, um, decided that they were going to try to take on the divine beast. But the truth is, like, you can't actually step foot on it unless you're a champion. Um, and he notices that you have the Sheikah slate, but also he thinks, like, he knows that all the champions died 100 years ago. So he's like, well, he must be like a descendant then. Like, if you have some of the blood, like, if you have, like, you know, blood of the champion, like, being the descendant of one of them, then perhaps you can, you can help. Like, you might be able to get onto it. Um, so, he's just, like, it's kind of, it, it's one of those situations where, like, you know, the Zora actually remember you. <laughs> the Rito have actually gone through some generations, it seems, where they don't, they don't know what you look like. They don't, um, they don't assume that you are actually the champion. Um. In fact, I think by the time we leave here, still nobody thinks that you're the champion. Um, but they are thankful that you helped out. <laughs> like they don't they don't know who Link is and that that's you. Just the wandering Hylian. Yeah. Taking out to Van Beast. Uh <laughs> so Canelli will tell you about Ravali as well, who was the Rito champion of old. Um he he'll tell you that all of the Rito warriors pretty much idolize him and that, you know, he was, he was known to be uh, one of the best flyers and able to wield a bow twice his size, which I don't know why they idolize him. I hope they don't don't idolize his attitude. (laughs) It's more the skill. I think they're, they're they're like a, you know, proud warrior group that loves to fly well and shoot well. He's the birdification of pride. All right. (laughs) Well, (laughs) Yeah, we're going to have plenty of time to talk about that. So we can go back to Laisa after talking to this guy. Um, after he pretty much asked you to help out. He's like, I don't know where uh, Tiba is now, but Laisa should be able to help. So you go over to Laisa and she's like, oh, yeah, he's at the flight range. Um, getting ready to go take on the Divine Beast by himself this time since uh, since Hearth got hurt. <laughs> um, he dropped the weak link. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and and she even says, like, oh, yeah, like he's a huge fan of Rivali. Like, he's even trying to get our son Tulin to be just like Rivali. Like, he takes him to go, like, play at the flight range, but really he's training him to be a Rita warrior like Rivali. It's mm-hmm. just what they all, like, the culture of the warriors is all about trying to meet this this bar that Rivali set back in the day. The pinnacle. Yeah, pretty <laughs> pretty much. So we can start making our way over to the flight range. <laughs> I think there's actually a, a cut scene, though. There is. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to say <clears throat> that. Um, we get a memory of Rivali. I, I, <sighs> I wish as long we didn't. As, as long as we're talking about cut scenes, we might as well mention when we first step into the Rito Village for the first time, you do get like a divine beast roar and Link like looks up and has a moment of like staring oh my gosh like, there it is yeah oh dang um but yeah this cutscene it goes back to link standing out on the flight deck of this place kind of reminiscent of the flight deck of skyloft i would think it's kind of a random callback not really helpful to this story but he's there when suddenly this giant gust of wind comes in and along with it comes Ravali, um who just immediately starts giving link a hard time just just immediately just starts bragging about his own skills <laughs> and being like, but just because you have the sword that makes you the champion, he's like, he's like, let like, forget about yeah. the fact that, you know, I'm the best flyer and also the best <laughs> archer of all the Rito. It's like, just because you have that sword, like you're suddenly special. Like you're the one. Who's yeah. Chosen. He says it's so, so horribly too. He's like, yeah. I can fly through the skies and fell three enemies with one arrow, but yet I will never be as good as you because of that sword. <laughs> it's like, that's the only reason you're anything is because you have that. So it's like, really, bro? Yeah. Like, you want a 1v1, bro? 
<laughs> yeah, like, that, really, come on. Man. But that's what Ravali says. <laughs> He's like, unless you want to prove me wrong. It's like, we just need a good uh, arena for it. Oh, I know. How about up there? Oh, wait, you can't get up there. And then he, like, flies away. And I'm like, how about right here? <laughs> like, yeah, what, right. Are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I want I want a sidebar real quick because... Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever p- played or seen anything on the uh, Hyrule Warriors 2 Age of Calamity game. No. I mean, no. I've, I've heard of it, and I've, I've like, listened to podcasts as they, like, go through the story, kind of, but I've, I've never played it, and I don't remember much. Okay. Well, this, this is nothing to do with, like, the story. It's just there is a insanely awesome like anime-esque fight scene between link and Ravali from that game you can look it up on youtube after we are done with this podcast anyone listening if you have not played the game and you love Ravali, go look at this cutscene because it is epic it is a crazy awesome fight scene between the two and then zelda comes in is like stop guys it's not fun to fight we're on the same team all right. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Like you guys should definitely check it out after this. Yeah. Yeah. Does Link win though? <laughs> uh, it's a draw. It's sadly a draw. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes I think that makes sense narratively. But it adds more context to their backstory. So it's cool. Yeah. It's like when the Flash races Superman and they intentionally make it a draw. Just just so that no one can say definitively one way or the other. <laughs> It's a nice rivalry. Yeah. Pushes them both to new heights. Uh huh. (laughs) No, it's funny that you say that because that's actually part of my point about Revali later on, but I don't want to get into that just yet. (laughs) Revali, I mean, he just, the game presents him very strongly as a jerk. Just like they want you to dislike him. Mm -hmm. Um, they want you to pretty much ask, like, what's this guy's deal? Why is he like this? We, we'll we get into it. It's it's just no fun. <laughs> you watch this cutscene, you're like, why am I helping you? <laughs> or any of these <laughs> people right now? You can, you can just stay in the beast if you want. You know, you know. <laughs> Basically, is what Link's no. thinking. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we don't. We're a little nicer than that. <laughs> Should have saved this one for the end, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so we we go out to the um the flight range to go meet up with our dude Tiba. Uh and his first his first reaction to you is also, you know, pretty standoffish. Like you you come up and he like looks over and he's like, "Oh yeah? Okay. Well, I'm pretty busy. You should probably leave." <laughs> like He's like, "Did you need something?" Like you probably don't. I'm good. You can leave me alone. I'm busy. Um, but then you, you know, you persist and he, he basically says like, listen, I'm trying to take on this divine beast. Um, super dangerous, probably don't want to be involved. And you're like, for sure I do. And he's like, all right, well, you're going to have to prove yourself then do this flight range challenge. Right. Like you got to prove to me that you can, you can actually like hold your own in midair combat. So you go flying out there. Luckily the flight range is full of upward winds. I don't. <laughs> Upward winds that immediately restore all of your stamina when you pull out your paraglider. Right. Which is going to be the mechanic when we actually get to the Divine Beast too. But yeah, we um just pull out your glider, fly around, shoot. It gives you like two minutes to hit five targets, which is way too much time. You don't need that it much time. It takes like 10 time. seconds. <laughs> yeah, about 10 yeah. seconds. And then, he, and then he's, he's, he's impressed enough. He's like, all right, I guess you can help. No, he's um, blown away. If you do it fast enough, he straight up looks at you. He goes, I've never seen anybody do it that fast. Yeah, you can help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so pretty much he just waits for you to be ready to go. He gives you a bow, I think, as a reward as well. So yep. nice and then he also gives you a there. chunk of bomb arrows so you don't have to go out and get them. Yeah. Well, and he then- tells you to bring food that's going to be good in the cold or some clothes. Yeah, I had the Rito clothes. I um, Same. Uh, when I got here, I was I was wealthy, and I was like, "All right, <laughs> I'm gonna get me some swag," because I already had the warm doublet. I didn't really need the clothes, but I was like, "I'm gonna get the whole set." <laughs> I don't think the warm doublet is enough when you're up in the air, though. You need at least one other thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So in my first playthrough, I had 
a ruby circlet from the Gerudo because I had gone there first. I did not have that this time, but also I could have just bought one piece of clothing, but instead I bought the whole set. <laughs> I'm like, I want the, I want them feather ear, ear tuft things. <laughs> you gotta be styling in that drip, man. I know. It's fun stuff. I went and upgraded it too. You just need mm. um fire chew jelly, and you can upgrade all of them. Oh to wow! Two. So that's what I like. Did. There's some there's some good swag in the Rito clothes. Unlike maybe one of the next ones we're gonna be hitting up. Yeah, it's not as pretty. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's um it's fun. I mean, so I mean, aside from all the other things, I mean, Rito Village is a is a pretty dead place before you take on the divine beast. So we could probably talk a little bit about some of the side quests that open up after. Um, and some of the ones that were technically open, we just didn't talk about them yet. Um, after we talk about the divine beast, if that's cool with you guys. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, so we, we tell Tiba that we're ready to go and he, uh, he flies us up to the divine beast where this thing has like laser cannons just on its flanks. Straight up um, aircraft carrier. Yeah. And he'll he'll just he'll just drop you off and be like, Okay, if you need me, just you know, fall for a while and I'll come and get you. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. So it's pretty yeah. cool though. Like he said he would run interference the whole time. So like oh, yeah. you can actually you can actually have him distract some lasers for you. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he goes he goes flying in as the distraction. As long as he's closer to the laser than you are, the laser will target him. Um, but he doesn't always stay between you and the lasers. Like he's all over the place. Um, but it does give you a lot of good windows and, and time to get in there. But same as with the flight range, all of your stamina comes back whenever you pull out your cell cloth. Um, yeah, I've never utilized him a single time in this, no matter how many times I've played through, I just fly from one to the other. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think he, you don't like command him or anything. So if it's, if you're going to utilize him, it's more of just like, watching him and positioning yourself accordingly but yeah oh I no just, wonder i just fly from one to the other two <laughs> i mean since you get your stamina back when you pull your your paraglider out all you, you literally as you're going up which happens automatically the laser will miss you or if you're dropping the laser will miss you it's almost hard <laughs> right. to get hit by the <laughs> laser oh yeah you gotta you gotta just be floating straight on and yeah yeah no i gotcha <laughs> um so yeah, so we destroy all these laser cannons and are able to land on the thing. Uh, Tiba basically says, you know, it's up to you now. <laughs> and he heads back to the Rito village. Turns out he got injured as well. Another another jacked up wing. Um, and we are able to enter this divine beast. Now this one, this one's fun because when you get the controls, you can actually tilt the whole thing like as if it's banking through the air. Um which actually opens up a lot of paths that I don't even know. Like some of them I feel like aren't even the intended path. Like there was, there was some time where they gave you like a little trolley that would like slide according to the tilt of the bird, but you don't need to take it because you can just fly. <laughs> when that yeah. Happens. You can just tilt the bird and jump from one end of the room to the other and glide. Yeah. It's fun. I think, uh, I think I beat this in 20 minutes. Nice. Yeah, a lot faster this time than my first time. I will say that. Well, funnily know. enough, the, the part that took me the longest in this dungeon was I got there and I saw where the map was because it immediately shows you the cutscene and Revali's like, hey, welcome to the Divine Beast. Here's the map. It's over here. <laughs> like, I'm um, still not friends with you, but welcome. Yeah. Let's and see I didn't anything. play again for like a week after that. And so I forgot where the map was. That was the hardest thing in this dungeon for me was to find the map so that I could control <laughs> the divine beast. After that, I ran through it like so fast. Oh, hilarious! Wow. And there was a spot where one of the wings, I think it was the left wing, it, it was blocked. Where you needed to go was blocked by a do uh, door. It was like the, the honeycomb door. And I oh, couldn't yeah. figure out how to get in there for the life of me. And I did some messed up like trickstery <coughs> stuff where... I tilted the entire thing so it was at like a 45 degree angle and then I jumped out one of the windows in that room and I sailed and I guess the room that's blocked by the door also has an open window. Mm -hmm. So I just jumped out the window and jumped into the window and I was like, that doesn't feel yeah. like that's supposed to be the thing that you're supposed to do. No. 
Um, but I did it. That's the only way I've ever been able to do that. Really? Yeah. So I don't yeah, know how to get the door open. Some kind of um, like magnet puzzle or something, but the the magnetism wouldn't reach it. So yeah, I, you got to tilt be, the bird and make the ball roll back towards you. Okay. See, and I've then when always, the ball rolls um, towards you, you can hit it with the the thing, and then yeah. you bring it to the other side of the room, and then tilt the bird back, and it goes right into the spot. Yeah. Before I ever thought to tilt anything to get the magnet to open up the door, um, one of the things you do before you would do that, I would think, is open up those windows. Because you bring an airstream in, and you need the airstream. Like when you put the bomb through, like it rolls, up, like the airstream blows it over, so you can mm-hmm. open the thing for the ball. Yeah, but when you do that, there's an open window in the room you're in. So I'm all I've all every time I've been there, I'm like, I bet I can get to that other window. <laughs> I just <laughs> jump out the one airstream and go in the other one, and it works yep. perfect. <laughs> I've never tried that. It's like a secret agent mission too. Yeah, it's really great. Like, it feels like Mission Impossible type nonsense. <laughs> So it's so fun to do, <laughs> but I've never. It's funny because I've, I've, I think when I went in there this time, I actually went in with the goal. Okay, how are you supposed to do this without the window? And then I was like, I walked over to the door, tried to do magnetism from across the room. It didn't reach. And instead of being like, maybe if I tilt the bird, the ball will roll. I was like, forget it. We're doing the window. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like it feels wrong to do it because I know it's not right, but it feels so good when you land it and you're like, yes. I, I definitely got stumped on that puzzle for a second. I was like running around looking at what to do. It was like, oh, it doesn't reach. I tried a couple times. And and then finally, I'm like, I can, I can tilt the whole bird and that's a ball. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of that. Uh, darn it. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it's mostly just gliding around until we get to the, uh, you know, we get all of our spots and we head up <coughs> to fight the Calamity Ganon. What is this, Wind Blight Ganon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, I can't really think of anything too crazy in this dungeon. It's like, when you get to the wings, you just tilt so that you can go down and get to the wing and then tilt it back so you can get back. And every single puzzle is revolving around either tilting it to do something with the environment inside of it or tilting it so that you can jump and get a different angle for gliding across the room to get to a place you couldn't get to. That's really mostly what this dungeon utilizes. So once you learn to look at things through those two different lenses and how you can abuse that or utilize that, you pretty, this whole dungeon is very simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True that. So, yeah. So we get up to, to fight i mean every, and listen every time we hit one of these switches Rivali's like oh you hit another one i didn't expect you to get this far like basically <laughs> every time he just <laughs> has something to say that instead of you know by the time you get to the fifth one his tone has changed a little bit where he's like you actually did it wow <laughs> and you can kind of tell there's some sincerity there but it's still like he's just holding back on like actually giving you any kind of praise for this he's like so, you're alive i'm not i'm mad at you <laughs> is the tone i felt well and also you're about to go fight the thing that bested me which means if you best it i pretty much can't deny the fact that you did something i couldn't do so he's probably begrudging that <laughs> yeah yeah so we so we go do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we go beat the thing he couldn't beat. Yep, yep. Well, yeah, we go. We fight Wimblight. Wimblight is easiest probably, one. He's easy, uh, but, but he's uh, so fun. Mm. <laughs> you, you cannot tell me you had any sort of difficulty well, on this. Okay, I'm in master mode. To be fair. Oh, right. Yeah, I okay. was um, I was an overly wealthy link when I came to Rito Village and ended up buying a bunch of bomb arrows. Mm. I think when I went into this fight. I had like 80 some odd bomb arrow. Like I just had way too many and I had some stupid bow that would like triple my arrows. So when I got into this fight, I just melted the dude. I just flew up in the air and just started beaming him with bomb arrows. And it wasn't like, it was a very short fight. I second phased him in like 30 seconds and then less than a minute I had him gone. Like, he put out all of his little drone thing. Like, he did right in the middle of the fight, he throws out a bunch of drones that will, like, make his laser way worse because it ricochets between all the drones. 
I flew up right in the middle of all the lasers, somehow didn't get hit by any of them, and just, just knocked him out of the air. Fell back down with all of his drones. They all like hit the ground with me, and then I stood up, shot him like twice more, and he was done. So I um I had an unusually easy experience with this guy um, because I came in with just I, w- way too prepared with the weapons that I had. I was just like overstocked Link. It's ridiculous. I, I used all the bomb arrows that um, the guy gave me for the beginning and used them to beat the boss. Basically, I sat on the same airstream the entire fight, went up in the air, sat there. As soon as he materialized, before he could even get all of his turrets up, I was already shooting him in the eye three times with three bomb arrows, ran over, hit, hit, hit. And even after he changed the second phase, I just did that same exact thing every time. Yeah. It was the easiest thing. He, um, Part of the thing about this fight is that because it's so aerial, you get a lot of bullet time. Um like, because every time if you do archery in the air, everything goes in slow mo, and that mechanic is so broken, it it makes hitting his eye and his you know getting the stun off like way easier than than for most of these divine beasts. I'll say. I suppose it might be a little harder if I didn't already have like two and then an additional upgrade past two stamina wheels because it took pretty much all of my stamina. <laughs> To get all three shots off and then hit the ground without running out of stamina. So if you didn't have at least as much as I did, which is probably like five upgrades at that point, this fight's probably harder. Yeah. Or if you're in master mode, you know. Yeah. yeah. What's what's hard about master mode? What's different about it in this? Because I really never even got hit once. So I died only once, which makes it seem like, oh, well, was it really that hard? Well... The hard thing about the fight in master mode, I feel, I could be wrong about this, but I feel like when you stun him in the eye, sometimes you're not as close to him as you want to be when you hit him in the eye and he falls. I feel like his stun window is only a second in master mode. I could be wrong. I don't know what it was when you guys were playing, but when I hit him in the eye, he went down, he got right back up almost instantly. If you were close to him, you might have been able to get like three sword swings, maybe two by the time he got up but it was brutal and then the little drones that he fires is what killed me the first time because i just wasn't i was too cocky and i was like like what is it gonna do uh so they got me and basically the the second fight when i went into it was like a war of attrition i mean that was a it was a probably 10 minute fight because I was shooting him, he was shooting me. We were just basically trying to like shoot each other from a distance. Like it took like 10 minutes to drop him. And I had like 149 bomb arrows from the amiibos. So like, I was stocked. <laughs> I had the I had the ammo. But like it was just like trying to get the hits without dying because if anything hit me, it was it was over. Oh my goodness. So it was like it was challenging. It wasn't insanely hard. But it's just like the fact of master mode that like at the time I had nine hearts and I still the tornado, I could get hit by the tornado. It wouldn't kill me. But the drones, if they actually got off, if I didn't kill them all, yeah, they they would ruin me. I, I yeah, I rolled the dice on the drones and it ended up going in my favor because I, I literally flew up right in the middle of all of them and there was like a triangle of lasers right around Link and he didn't get <laughs> and like, oh, wow right? <laughs> I'm taking my shots <laughs> <laughs> sorry drones it's not your day I guess they need an update he didn't get that latest patch <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Ganon too yeah, other than that junk, it was fun. It it was a long battle that was just like trying to find the right spot to hit him without getting hit yourself. And trying to get as close to him as possible for when he dropped. Yeah. Yeah, that was the hard part, was getting to him and hitting him even more than like three times. So uh, we take him out, right? He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. We done, we done liberated the uh, Va Meadow. Um, earlier on in the season, I think I said something about Meadow possibly being Mido, but that's not that's not true. Meadow is based on Medley, like it's named after Medley, the sage from Wind Waker. 
just mm. as an aside. Um, all of, so all of the beasts are named after sages. They're just not all named after Ocarina of Time sages. One of them is named after a Wind Waker sage, um, which is where we originally met the Rito. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, uh, we have we have freed Divine Beast Von Meadow and the spirit of Ravali within it. Uh, so we get a cutscene with Ravali where his spirit is finally like. You did good. <laughs> like I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you this gift. Basically, like it's my, it's my, uh, you know, my secret technique or whatever. That like, no one else has been able to replicate, where he creates his own upward draft from the ground to gain immediate flight with speeds unseen before. <laughs> right. <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unfortunately, he didn't have the chance to pass it down to the other reader warrior, so he, you know, it's still with him. Um. So yeah, we then get, we see the the bird perch. Yeah, and then the bird finally perches and takes aim at Ganon. Um, and then Rivali says the thing we've finally been waiting for him to say. He says, "You know, I think I finally have to admit it. He did something I could not." Wow. He doesn't say it to Link. He says it to himself in the bird, but right. he finally admits it in words out loud to something. <laughs> and Link has proved himself his equal, if not better. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know when, when we talked about Mifa, right? We talked about the champions and how they all kind of represent some position in the family, um, like with respect to Link. Rivali mm -hmm. is 100% a brother. Like that, that is a, that's just straight up what he is. Like he's not, like the rivalry. The whole like, like you're not better than me kind of attitude like that. It's like Itachi and Sasuke if if you want to look at it like that. Itachi and Sasuke is a that is it's, a it, that is an extreme thing to compare <laughs> Rivali to. <laughs> when they're older, it's like uh, the they're, they're just rivals. They want he wants to beat them up, but he's like, I'll never admit that you're better than me until the one day. It happens. Well, that's, that's what I was going in for. that aspect. In in this version, Rivali, I mean, he's like this. The way I've heard the story that I really liked is that Rivali put all kinds of work into being the best warrior. You know, like he, like the fact that he did develop a technique and he was the best archer and he was the fastest flyer. Like he spent his whole life kind of training to be this incredible warrior, but he doesn't know Link's story. So when it's like declared, oh yeah, Link is going to be the champion of all Hyrule, as in like, he's like, like, yeah, you all are champions of your own respective groups, but Link is like the guy. Rivali's like, why him? Like, I haven't seen him do anything particularly amazing. Like, has he put in this kind of work? You know, like he just has all these assumptions. Um, one might call them insecurities <laughs> and he's kind of like, this isn't fair. This isn't just like, I put in enough work like every day to try to be the best I can. Like, why, why was I not given this op opportunity? You know, like, why didn't the sword choose me or whatever? Um, and so that kind of spurs on that thing. But I think at the heart of the relationship, like Rivali, he comes across as a jerk, but the truth is, you know, like, um, this is going to be a bad reference for it's going to be narrow casting a little bit here, but you know, my hero academia, right? Like, you know, Kachan, right? Bakugo. <laughs> Bakugo. Right. Like, he's just a jerk to Deku all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. You kind of understand that behind that, he's actually challenging deck like he's like no like like if you're gonna if you're gonna have this power you're gonna be this character like you need to put in the work like i need to see it from you like i need to see you like mm -hmm. be the guy if you're gonna be the guy <laughs> like rivali kind of has that same thing going on where he's he comes across as a total jerk because you know honestly he is being a total jerk but like in terms of like how that affects Link, how that helps Link, is that that's a challenge. That's basically to say to him, like, "Hey, you got to be giving it your all." Like, there are other people who would have taken this job and put everything they had into it. Like, it's not right for you to be the champion and not be the best champion that you could be. 
in that way, like that brothership, like that rivalry, whatever you want to call it, that sibling rivalry, like it's it's calling him higher. Like it's calling like like you said before, like to new heights, right? Um, it's a high call. It's basically just to say, like, hey, if you're really this chosen person, like you need you need to show up. Um so And we a, did. In a way, there is a positive way to look at this relationship, even though I know everybody sees Rebali and immediately is just like this this jerk. <laughs> like he needs to yeah. not be in the game. There's there's always different ways to look at it. You can see, yeah, he's antagonizing Link. He's trying to push him to do better through maybe not the best means. It's kind of like bullying to get expectations, like to get results out of somebody, like make them feel bad so that they feel bad so they get better. <laughs> Kind of thing. He's trying to make you feel bad. Like, oh, the only reason you just got that sword. If that sword didn't pick you, you'd be nothing, my gay. He's like, step <laughs> up. Come on. Show me what you get. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the perspective I try to take with Revali, because otherwise I can't stomach the dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, he just, he's, he's very prideful. Giving him some grace. It's always going to be. Yeah. I think that the bragging is probably the worst part. I mean, saying like, hey, just because you have that sword, you think you're special. Like, sure. Like, that's a reasonable... I mean, it's a horrible way to say it, but I mean, you might as well ask, hey, like, do you actually fight anything? <laughs> you know, or did you just randomly get the sword? Like, where are you at, really? You know, to just be like, well, I'm pretty much the best there is. I don't know why I would have picked you. It's like, well, that's, you need to take a humble pill, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a reason. I don't, I don't know. You've been up in the air too much, my guy. Your head's in the clouds. Right. That's kind of my take on Rivali. Now that that's through, we've you know we've effectively saved uh, the Rito from their no flight zone, and we can go actually uh, do a couple more little missions around town. One of the cool ones, well, it's not run by Amali, but Amali is Cass's wife, and she, you know Cass has five children, which is uh, crazy, you know, quite a bit. Um, yeah. To to not be home <laughs> with yeah to, to leave uh, to leave Amali home with uh, five kids for the entirety of Link's adventure, which you know in game takes a very long time. The five kids are Genli, Keel, Kotz, Knots, and uh, Cree. Cree's the last one, and they all are like different colors. Uh, very very rainbow esque family. Uh, and if we're and, what's up we're talking about the you know responsibility of the parents you know Cass being gone leaving Keel or sorry leaving Amali you know to kind of mother all oh, the five hens or five chickies it's a little overwhelming for her she loses one of the kids somewhere <laughs> which is hilarious it's not her well, fault I mean it's hard to probably manage five kids but yeah, when you first when you first get to the town, um, Amali is is out by the shrine with Keel, and um, she's basically like, "Yeah, Keel really wants to go do song practice. Like the warblers haven't been able to practice since this, the, you know, this menacing bird has been flying around town." Um, at least I think that's what they call themselves. Yeah, the warblers. Yeah, the recital at Warbler's Nest. So. I don't know if they actually call themselves the Warbler, but they go to the Warbler's Nest to do their recital. So she's just, you know, she's kind of downhearted. And she says, yeah, I really wish he was here at times like this. But she doesn't say who he is, but that's kind of where you get the impression, okay, this is probably Cass's family. (laughs) Um, Plus they're musical, like they're going to sing songs, you know. Once everything is fixed up, Keel is... She goes to the Warbler's Nest by herself, if I remember right. Uh, but she's upset because all of her siblings were supposed to also come for the recital, and they haven't yet. They ghosted on it. They're they're late, what, what have you. Um, so you have to go and figure out why these other birds aren't there. And turns out that the other birds aren't there because it's thinking Genli. <laughs> Genli just wants to eat some salmon. <laughs> Dang it, Ken Link. Like, he's like, I'm a hungry boy. What do we want me to sing <laughs> on an empty stomach? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. um, and the whole rest of the family has to figure out how to get him his food. So, like, I mean, Keel's not really a part of it. She's just out singing. Um, 
say the whole rest of the family pretty probably too preemptively because I think one of the sisters is actually like just sitting up on a rock singing on their own as well. Um, but then one of them is in the shop trying to get goat butter. One of them is out trying to catch the hearty salmon <laughs> for the actual salmon dish. Um, and basically that's, that's where they're all at. All the kids are like, Oh yeah, if we don't get Genley this fish, we're like we're never going to make it out there to, to do rehearsal. So of course it's on link to go make this dish and, and get it to him. So I guess that brings me to this episode's Fonzie's Farms. <laughs> He's about to drop the spot for more items to get through and beat the plot. So you better listen to his words, because he's about to tell you where to get the herbs. It's Fonzie's Farms. Because there's a place to catch hardy salmon that's like right on the way to the Rito Village. There's a little pool that always has two hardy salmon in it. So it's not a lot. It's not a big farm. It's a little pond, but even outside of this quest, like it'll just spawn two hardy salmon whenever you want. Um, it might even be three. Um, I will say that a little asterisk on that. If you're looking for gourmet meat, <laughs> aside from the hardy salmon, just head north into the Hebrew mountains and go moose hunting slash rhino hunting slash ice wolf hunting. <laughs> All of those drop gourmet meat on the regular. And as long as you pick it up before it freezes, it's it's all good. So good place to get that. Um I I farmed that. I mean, I went through a lot of shrines in the Hebrew region because we don't actually have a Hebra episode lined up. <laughs> um hmm. and from that I was able to go spend whatever rupees I had left by the house and then go and get all three thousand of those rupees right back by selling gourmet meat dishes. So Nonsense. Nonsense Dang. money. Yeah. Um so yeah, the the recital at the Warbler's Nest. Once you feed Genley, um, they will actually all go out there and meet up with Keel, and you'll find them singing a song that correlates to these uh runes, I get like they're it's well, ruins, I should say. Um there's like five different statues that all have like a hole in the middle. And what you have to do is take a leaf and blow air through each of the holes according to what the birds are singing. So they'll they'll sing a tune and it corresponds to which note you're supposed to play. Um and once you play the right tune, a shrine will come up and you can you can get that that way. Um It's very cool. It's a very cute scene because they sing the song like when you get when you finally play the song, like they all go flying home and it's just this it's a really nice, wholesome moment <laughs> in the game. <laughs> it reminds me of Majora's Mask when you get the little chicks to pop up into hens, right? Like, it's just one of those, like, really cute Zelda moments that, like, I always try to seek out when I'm playing the game. So, fun stuff. And it was being held up by a kid that wanted a salmon. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Pretty much. Feed the kid, man. These picky kids these days eating nothing but salmon. What are we going to do? Speaking of kids eating salmon, that leads me into cooking with Anthony. Hey, yo. <laughs> cooking with Anthony. That's because it actually is the salmon minier, or however you pronounce it, minier. You just have salmon to have that manure. French egg. <laughs> yeah, that's it sounds like you say to me do. <laughs> Minye. I don't really know how it, it's pronounced. Honestly, I didn't I, I didn't I look. Don't. I think it's Minye, but yeah. This Minye. Right. So yeah, this is actually a very easy dish to make. Um, as opposed to the Breath of the Wild version, which takes quite quite the ingredients. Like you need some tabantha wheat, goat butter, hearty salmon, and then you can add more ingredients, like more hearty effects to it to make it meaty and get some more health but sure. the actual salmon itself well i don't know if you guys like fish but it was it was beautiful so you kind of just get like a good old 12 ounce thing of salmon and you want to juice just roll it in lemon roll it in garlic roll it in salt pepper and 
just put a pan with medium oil. Roll just throw some butter pan. in that pan. Yeah, you're just going to want to roll it in all those ingredients. Garlic, salt, pepper, lemon. You didn't use goat butter? No, that that's for the pan. You put the butter in the pan. That's where the goat oh, butter th- comes in. I thought you gotcha. said you put the oil in the pan. You put the oil in the pan, heat it up, and then you put the butter in the pan. Uh, okay. that's, that's where the goat butter comes in. And then after that, you're going to want to put some flour over the salmon in the pan on both sides. Cook the salmon for three minutes on each side. Get two tomatoes, cut them in half, put them on the sides of the dish to make it kind of look like the hearty salmon. And then you're going to want to get some cabbage balls. Um, Romanesco works. Romanesco is a vegetable that kind of looks like what it is in the pitcher. And then if you just want to be even cooler and make it look more like the pitcher, you can put some chives in some goat butter and just melt it right over the top of the salmon. And you have salmon mignon. And it's so good. It's so good. It's buttery. It's salty. It's it's lemony. It's like... I do love me some good fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, salmon salmon is is good stuff. We just had some the other night, actually. Nice. You should have made salmon minier. (laughs) Well didn't think of it at the time I don't know. <laughs> that actually would work with our current diet situation but yeah it's a lot of carbs so yeah I mean, if you're on keto much. though yeah no it's you're good it's fine no that sounds really good i'm gonna i'm gonna keep in mind that this is the universal sign for 12 ounces now <laughs> what is it 12 ounces of salmon <laughs> 12 ounces. <laughs> he put up two fingers to show like the length of the salmon. This is what 12 ounces looks like. <laughs> Just in case you weren't wondering, this is six, but this, this is 12. Thickness be darned. 12-er. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Delicious. Speaking of delicious, um, there's a there's a couple here. Cam, you want to take on the legend of... Uh, Yo, the legend of Jogo and Junie. <laughs> Junie I, Junie's the wife, in case you're wondering. Yeah, so you find Junie, and she's just wandering around, and she is upset. You talk to her, she's like, I can't believe this. This is my honeymoon. We're at a rock. Everyone's a bird. I just want a roasted apple. And my useless husband, who's the reason why I'm on this rock and in a bad mood without an apple, is not helping. So get his butt in gear. She literally says, this place is such a hole. And I'm like, you're not wrong. (laughs) It's just a big hole with a rock jutting out of the middle. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. Um, So you you go talk to my guy. And he's worried that his relationship is in jeopardy because of the mood of his wife at this moment. And she needs apples now. (laughs) She's having a... Is an attack of needing apples. The doctor is on his way. She's like, I just can't have this. She needs apples. And so you give my guy some apples. You you cook them up for him. And then uh, she's pacified. And she's like, well, you know, I guess this isn't so bad. I have apples, but I still wanted to go somewhere else. Yeah, I, um, I, I guess I solved this in a different direction. Because when I met her and she was like, this place is the worst. I just want a baked apple. I was like, all right, bet. I made her a baked apple. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even go find her husband. I was like, "You need an apple? I got apples. It's not even hard. It's barely an inconvenience. <laughs> it's barely an inconvenience." So I I set up a fire right on the boardwalk because you know, like you do, um, threw some apples by it, picked up the apples, gave one to her. She's like, "Oh, this is great. Here, take this," and gave me a hundred rupees for the first apple. And I was like, "Oh, that's nice." And she's like. She's like, and then uh, made a few more. She's like, wait, do you have 10 baked apples? I'll take 10. I was like, sure. She gave me 70 rupees for 10 baked apples. And then she was like, the more you pay me, the more the more I'll pay you per apple. And I was like. This woman just really likes right. apples. So I went and I tried to like hit whatever the next threshold was, but I didn't. It just, it still worked out to about seven rupees per apple. And I was like, all right, we're not going to do that anymore. But while I was in the middle of that operation, um, one of, one of the Rito kids just like ran through my campfire and destroyed it. <laughs> 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 he 
because he just had an NPC path and he couldn't veer from it. So he just <laughs> ran into the fire and the fire just puffed out into smoke. And I was like, all right, I guess we're done here. <laughs> that kid, that kid's going places. Right. Fire He's got the spirit of Revali with him. The, the mm-hmm. gale follows him. Man. Um, <laughs> so then later on, I ran into Jogo and he was like, man, I messed up. Like we came to the wrong place. Uh, this is not where my, you know, my new wife wanted to be for our honeymoon. Um, I just need to make her a baked apple. Do you have any flint on you? And I was like, yeah, I got flint. So I gave him a piece <laughs> of flint and he gave me a hundred rupees. And I was like, it's funny, your wife actually gave me a hundred rupees for a baked apple. <laughs> You're playing both sides of the feeder field, my <laughs> guy. Oh, I just got I got paid by both of them. But um, but his second request, he was like, "Hey, like, will you sell me thirty flint?" And I was like, "Absolutely not. <laughs> that's that's not okay." I went into my inventory. I had thirty two flint. I was like, "You are not taking thirty of my thirty two flint, my guy." Yo, so <laughs> I I gave him I gave him the flint the second time. The man paid me two hundred and fifty rupees. No. For that flint, <laughs> I, well, you're you're talking to someone who's got like over a hundred flint. Well, are you are you getting amiibo flint? Is that a thing? Amiibo flint, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> the Goron, the Goron amiibo gives me flint and rock salt every time I bring it down. Oh, jeez, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I would be selling the flint too if I was doing that. <laughs> flint. <laughs> take it, man. I'm so upset that I'm like. I'm playing extra episodes, doing all kinds of stuff I don't need to do because because I just have time and I keep talking about these numbers that I'm hitting in my inventory and then you just come around like, yeah, well, I've been amiibo win. I just <laughs> infinite everything. <laughs> I'm infinite over here. You, you want to know how many uh, how many salmons I got? I got like 70, 70 of each salmon. Because like <laughs> salmon just drops with almost every amiibo. That has to do with Link because Link and salmon, you know. Get off of this so. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Master mode, though, you know, it's hard. Got to have them recipes. Got to have them recipes ready. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so that's Jogo and Juni. Fun, fun couple. Not really. No, no, she's pretty upset. I mean, she, I mean, she doesn't seem like the most, um, uh, I don't even know what to say. Respectful person in general. I mean, she she pretty much well, says like it's like oh you know like we could have gone to you know the Gerudo town where they have the fancy jewelry or or you know the Zoras where they have the weird spiritual fish people. <laughs> but instead, we ended up here on this rock. I'm like, <laughs> who are you call weird spiritual fish people? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of not wrong though. Well, yeah. I know, but like. Her, her whole take on it is like we could have gone somewhere where we could have seen some stuff <laughs> like, <laughs> but it, it just seems like uh, everything was just like a tourist destination like she's not really she's not really there for the people who are there she's just like yo like I want to be entertained I need a baked apple <laughs> I need some sense <laughs> did you guys uh, go talk to Kepora Gebora after Mado? Um, I think so. He gave me a, he gave me some kind of heirloom bow. Oh yeah. 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 So you go talk to him and, uh, he gives you Rivali's champion bow, the great Eagle bow, and it fires three shots at once. And then if it breaks, you actually just speak to hearth and he's like, yeah, I'll fix you up a new one. That's pretty dope. It doesn't do much damage, honestly, but you hit with three. So if you can hit yeah. all three times it. And normally you have to um normally you have to like pay some kind of price or exchange materials for them to repair your stuff. But if he Darth just does it, that's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah, you so need we have something. The, uh, we have the fixable Zora spear and we have the fixable Rivali's bow. Yeah. Yeah, and um one of the things I do remember is that when you, even when you talk to um, uh, Canali or Canelli the second time, you know Canellini Bean, Canali. 
yeah, he uh, he still kind of says like, oh, you know, you'd look just like the hero, but you know, he had the legendary blade, and you don't seem to have that yet. Like he kind of made a a point where we of, should go of mentioning that, like, oh yeah, you're just you're just missing that legendary blade. It's like should still be in Hyrule somewhere, just don't know where. You know that kind of that kind of thing, like a hint, um, which for us is is perfect because that actually is what we're planning for our next episode. Woo. Pretty so, sure I have enough hearts at this point. Yeah, I I I did. I already went and got. <laughs> yeah, same. Did you do the Frost Talus quest? Yeah, I did the I did the Frost Talus quest. I did the 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 Snow White Birdie quest. I did um I went snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I found Shield the board. by the giant Leviathan. Like I did all the Hebrew stuff I could, so I had a lot of fun up in the snow while I was uh while I had extra time. That's why I died I a so lot up meat. there. <laughs> I did died you go quite get the snow boots there. first before you did all of it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the snow boots you can keep for eternity. No, I didn't have the snow boots. Uh, I'm probably going to try to get those snow boots before I do the uh, the other snow mountains. <laughs> you know. I fought a guardian up in the ice. It was Ooh. frozen, had a bunch of moose around it. <laughs> that was fun. The moose guardian. Pretty much. Uh, it got up to it and it started like cracking the ice off of it. It was actually kind of a cool set piece. Um, hmm. Super random, though. No, no associated quest. Just, just there was a guardian up in the up in the mountains for some reason. Was, he was cold. Was yeah. that the mountain? I think it's over there. Oh, I could be mistaken. Unless we already talked about it. There's like a mountain up in Hebra that just looks like it has a giant cannon hole, just like blocked out the side <laughs> of it. Like, did you see that? I did see that. That wasn't. Yeah. I mean that was the mountain range. I don't think that was the mountain though, because it was it was like there was actually like a little plateau. There was a flat part. Where yeah, like one of those mountains. One of those mountains over there just has like a giant guardian laser hole just shot straight through the side of it. It looked really cool. I think it was a guardian. It could, maybe it's like a divine beast. I don't know. It was big. Yeah, there's there's evidence of some weapon like we haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> like perhaps it was a divine beast, but mm. it looks like you know, like spirit bomb. <laughs> when yeah, the side of the <laughs> yeah, but yeah. That's that's everything I wanted to cover about this place. I mean, what some visual details I feel like I could have gotten into. Like there are pots that you can actually pick up and smash here, and they have little wings on the sides, which is kind of cool. Mm. <laughs> the pots have wings. I don't know. Um, there's also one thing to note, the carpets, if you look at the the floors and even um, some of the banners and stuff like that have um, the same symbol on them. It's a little, it's like bird symbol. It looks like a big, I don't know, like a UW type shape. And it's got like a little tail feather at the bottom. It's the, it's the same pattern that's on your sailcloth, which would oh. pretty much just go to say that the sailcloth is actually a Rito artifact uh which i thought was pretty cool i uh, don't know what the history of the cell cloth actually is but it has the rito marking on it so um fun. i think cass actually mentions that too he's like earlier on i think it was in a collar region he's like oh you know these there's these wind streams but you know only Ravali and people who possess the power of, or not Ravali, uh, Rito and people who possess the power of the Rito can ride these streams. And it's like, well, I so happen to have a sailcloth with, from the Rito people. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, something <laughs> like wings of cloth and wood or something like that. Like he had some specific Yeah. that was very much pointing to your sailcloth. 
But yeah, that's that's the Rito Village. That's Divine Beast Von Meadow. It's probably the honestly the thinnest <laughs> area in the game. I kind of I kind of feel like Junie was kind of a meta character that they put in after <laughs> after they <laughs> themselves the developers realized they're like, like hey, we need some a whole lot here. <laughs> Let's put a tourist in who's like this place is a hole. <laughs> 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 Making a joke about the area. But we did get the best utility ability in the game from this. Yeah. Yeah. This Ravali's Gale and being able to like pop up 20 to 30 feet in the air and even float there for a second or two whenever you want. And you can use it three times in a row before it goes on like a 10 minute cooldown is just. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. Nice. There's going to be some sections in the game later where that demand climbing, unless you have Revali scale and you can just cut out so much time. Like, it is such a powerful shortcut. It's, it makes the yeah. whole rest of the game so much more convenient. I mean, even just on your own explorations, going up mountains and stuff, <laughs> or trying to get across a giant gas, a chasm where you need a. Uh like a wider is you need to get up higher so you can make it across a wider gap. That's a, a technique that will help a lot in those situations. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So this has been our episode of a for no B for yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry for all of our delays. We are back. Uh, anything else comes up, we'll be sure to let you know. Otherwise you can follow us on our social medias. I stream on Facebook gaming. Uh, Anthony does see motionals over on a, uh, instagram uh so go check in on see what kind of new stuff they have going on and um we will catch you next time on a for no b for yes yo who is it who is it is it me did you get all that <laughs>